bulletin, one of my responsibilities is to welcome. In order that I might do a good job, I lift up the definition because I wanted to impress first. <laughs> It's defined as extolling, expelling, a greeting of friendship and gladness. So here it goes. Good morning and welcome to First Christian Church, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning! I invite you to join me in the festivities as we join in an expression of love for each other and an expression of admiration and love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 As I invite you to participate, there are many ways in this church to participate. One thing I've learned, as old as I am now, <laughs> is that you can develop relationships best by showing an interest in another. You have the opportunity on the back of your bulletin to do that very thing. And as you look and assess and consider what you might do, I encourage you to listen. As God prompts you, invites you, if you will, to join him in his work. With that being said, let's go for the prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are excited and thankful to be here. Excited again because we get an opportunity to gather together and express our love for each other that you have instilled in each and every one of us. We're here today, Father, to express our love for you. And most assuredly, our great sense of thanksgiving for all that you have given us in our lives. So we ask, Father, that you join us. We humble ourselves before you. We open our hearts and our minds so that we might hear you speak. For all of us yearn to feel your presence. And we do that in song, in verse, in word. And we do this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Wow. Good. Let's try to sing a song. Praise to Jesus Christ.
times you might even get sick. Look what's happening around us. We have to kind of stay apart. We have to protect ourselves from sickness that's going around. But when we cry out to our Lord Jesus, when we cry out, Lord Jesus, Master, have mercy on us, he will bless us. He will bless us and we don't even know how. And, and, and we might be doing something we're told. Jesus told these men in our scripture to go see the priest and show them that they were cleansed. He healed them. He helps us with all them things when we cry out. When we cry out, he blesses us. So let us praise our God. Let us praise Jesus for what he's blessed us with, what he's given us. Praise God for our church. Praise God for our families. Let's remember to thank Jesus. Let's remember to thank God. Let's remember to thank our family that we know and love for all the things that are given to us. Matter of fact, this week, I give you a challenge. God gives you a challenge. This is your challenge for this week. Let us thank Jesus for what he has blessed us with. Let us thank our family and our parents for what they have blessed us with. Let's be thankful. Did you be thankful this week? Praise God. Praise God. There you go. The first one to be thankful. The first one to offer up that challenge. Praise God. Thank you, children. Have a blessed week. Yes, yes. All right. And your mom. I'm thankful for your mom. I'm glad to see you both thankful for your moms. Tell her. Tell her you're thankful. Praise God. Thank you, everybody. Good job. Bye, everybody. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, and thank you to these children and to the parents and grandparents who bring them. This is so exciting. Wow. Can you hear me? Yes. What we've been doing in the last couple of months is trying to teach the children the importance of giving back and making an offering to the church. So today we want to take the opportunity to dedicate the offerings that the children have brought and Eli is going to say a blessing over it um, and then we have another announcement. We dedicate this money to this Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Thank you, children, for that generous offering. We are having our uh, Christmas family night, so if you are a parent, a child, grandparent, child, parent, whatever, if you want to just come to have some fun, we are really going to have a good time. And we've got some special guests coming that night, and uh, so kids, you don't want to miss it. The only thing that I ask is because we are going to be making some specific uh, goodie bags, that you let me know by December 2nd for especially the kids. We are having a meal. Uh, we're making lasagna and green beans and Texas toast. And so kind of would like to know how many adults, how many children are going to be present that night so that we can make sure you have enough. And especially for the kids' goodie bags. So I have a sign-up sheet out front. Uh, please don't forget to sign up. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. We've got, like I said, we're going to have some special guests. The secret. Well, we come to a moment of prayer. Certainly, our prayers of thanks. 
Thanksgiving this morning. It's Thanksgiving week, and certainly a beautiful holiday we have before us for family. Thanking God on Thursday. But today, in the life of our church, is Thanksgiving Sunday. You'll see the beautiful fruits and vegetables that Wiley so generously donated, and Catherine McCoy and Kent Hunter did the decorations. I think they're gorgeous. Yes. And they certainly uh, <laughs> lift up our spirits and make us think of the Lord's bounty. <coughs> now, what I had in mind was we'd have this beautiful array of vegetables and fruit. And since we're not having our Thanksgiving dinner today, as we usually do, because we wanted to be safe from this disease and not have food here in the church and be socially distanced as well. But we have all these vegetables and what and the fruits, and what I would like is for every one of you to come forward and take one of these at the end of the service get a vegetable or a fruit, whatever you wish to pick from the baskets or the table, take it. And this Thursday, use it in your Thanksgiving dinner oh. at home. And then we'll all be together. And then, you know, I've got symbolism all my life. <laughs> and uh, it's all there. And I think we can all be together in this way if we Take one of these vegetables or fruits that were dedicated here at our table and represented God's blessings in our lives and use them in cooking the dinner. Amen. Or whatever. Get a piece of fruit. I love a fruit salad. <laughs> <laughs> I can add to it. You know? I hope you'll enjoy them. And you'll thank uh, not only the, the dear God's blessings, the blessings of being in the church. Amen. A couple of people come to mind as we think of our prayers this morning. Henry Self has been transferred from the hospital to rehab at Peterson to the Hilltop uh, Nursing and Rehab Center. So he'll be there for a time going through OT and PT and getting back on his feet. And then last night, or yesterday, I'm told, uh, Bill Ferris was brought to the hospital emergency room. It seems he got in the corral and he and a ram had a discussion. Mm -hmm. And that ram cut him down and broke his leg. So uh, he's either in the hospital still or he was in the emergency room. It's not clear to me, but certainly. You know, Bill, that's uh, Rosemary's father. Okay. He lives over near Bandera, between Bandera and Medina, I believe. And uh, he, he's still active in his 90s. I mean, he, he's going for those cheap that he has, but one of them took him down. So we'll pray for him and ask God's blessing to give him a quick recovery. Also, uh, Barbara French had a fall this week and uh, is impaired a little bit from that. Broke her patella, her kneecap. Oh. And uh, he's, uh, she was going to be in a play. And they were at the rehearsal, the last rehearsal before the play opened. And now she can't do her part. And uh, she'll have to let me understand. There might be others you're thinking of. Lance? Uh, yeah, also let's keep Sandy Langley in our prayers. She was exposed to something with COVID, so she's self quarantined. That's why she can't be here this morning. Well, good for Sandy. Yes. yes. And I'm glad she's in self quarantining, and we'll pray for Sandy as well. I have prayers. Annette made her payment. Well, are you sharing?
Oh, it was a hot summer afternoon in East Texas. No place could be hotter with all the humidity over there in the piney woods of East Texas. We'd had 30 days in a row with 100 degree temperatures. And now it was five o'clock and it was still above 100. And I was walking across the sticky asphalt we called our church parking lot. I was going home. We, we had the parsonage right across the road. And the church family lived there, the pastor and his wife. And I was going to see my family anxious to get home after a long, hard day. I walked in gave my wife a kiss there in the kitchen and went on to the den to find my easy chair. I had to pull to one little kid and a floppy-eared beagle dog out of that chair. But I want you to understand that chair had been voted my domain by a grateful family. I sat down there, pushed back in my chair, heard the air conditioning click on, that cool air began to hover about my topography. I was comfortable. I pulled the evening paper up to read, and I was beginning to slip into an easy half slumber when all of a sudden I heard footsteps. I knew who those footsteps belonged to for she had been coming in and out of my life for some time now unsolicited. And here standing beside my chair was my lovely wife and she spoke to me in a tone that I know only too well <laughs> and without enthusiasm she said to me why don't you get up and go to the grocery and get some bread while I finish up supper. I sat there for a moment, mulling over the information I had received. <laughs> Only for a moment. And then I struggled to my feet and into the vacuum of which was sucked two little boys and a floppy-eared beagle dog. And I struggled to go outside into the heat to find the car parked there in the driveway. Now, all winter long, we had tried to teach the children to roll up the windows in the car. And by August, they'd learned that lesson well. <laughs> all those windows were up, and that car was hotter than Nebuchadnezzar's furnace. <laughs> I couldn't touch the wheel, but I managed somehow to back it out into the street and head for the grocery. Now I have to tell you, I don't know anything about grocery stores. I don't know where anything is. It's all a mystery. I just, I started up one aisle and down the other aisle, down this aisle, and, and then I saw the ice cream freezer and I, I said, oh my, look at all these flavors of ice cream, banana nut and chocolate and, and Barbara's favorite pecan praline and all these wonderful flavors. And, and I, I thought, well, I, how long has it been since
sent you through a family party and had a really good time with the kids. The kids would like ice cream. So I began to get some ice cream in the basket, this flavor and that flavor. And, and, and then I took a step or two and I saw some cookies, Oreo cookies. I'm an impulse shopper. I bought one of those and I put it in the basket and, and, then, and then I saw some little donuts in a package and they were all white with powdered sugar. And I thought, oh, this will top off the party and we'll have so many good things. And, and I was going up and down those aisles and, and, and all of a sudden it occurred to me, I better get home in this heat, that ice cream's gonna melt and, and I've gotta get it there for the party. I'll, I'll just get to the checkout stand as quick as I can. And I flew by that checkout stand, leaving half my weekly paycheck and I got back in the car and I started home. And I was so proud. Oh my, I was proud. I, I got out of the car, I had that bag of groceries and, and I, I, I set it down real affirming like on the counter and I was so pleased. I, I went back to my chair and, and I had to pull that little kid out of there in a, in a floppy-eared beagle dog, but, I sat down and I thought, oh my, and the air conditioning came on and oh, I was comfortable. I began to sleep into a half slumber. And then I heard footsteps. <laughs> I knew who those footsteps belonged to. Here was my loving wife coming to tell me those words that every man worked so hard for, for his family. She was gonna tell me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. But she stood there beside my chair and opened her cherry lips to say without enthusiasm, <laughs> you forgot the bread. <laughs> I appreciate your tears. <laughs> you dummy, you forgot the bread. It was my very errand in life. It's what I had to do. It was my mission. And I forgot what it was. I forgot the bread. Isn't that so much like us? Here we go through life. We have all these blessings. Wonderful people around us who are forever doing nice things for us. An awesome God that has lavished so many good things upon our lives, blessing upon blessing, stack sky high, more than we could ever number. And sometimes, sometimes we forget to say thank you. The Gospels told a story like that. It seems that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And he came to this little village and 10 men came out to see him. Now they were really respectful. They were properly socially distanced. They stayed away from him, but they had leprosy and they cried out, Master, take pity upon us. Jesus, heal us from our leprosy. And as the story goes, Jesus healed them, every one of them, all ten. But then we're told that only one came back to thank Jesus, to praise God. 
for his blessings. And Jesus asked the very penetrating question, where are the other nine? These gospel stories draw us into the action. And we get to look at ourselves as we read them and decide for ourselves whether we're one of the nine who went off with our family rejoicing and praising God that we had this newfound health. Or were we, could we possibly feel that we are the one who came back to thank Jesus? Who came back to praise God. This is such a, a wonderful story to kind of prick our conscience about Thanksgiving. To help us understand sometimes we're not as thankful as we should be. That we need indeed to be more and more thankful. We need to count up our blessings. Name them one by one, as the old song said. And lift them up to God in thanksgiving and praise. I think of several things this morning. You probably will think of many more. And really none of these things I'm thinking of needs to be belabored. We just simply need to name them and to thank God for them. I'm thinking of our very lives. We need to thank God for every breath we take, I think. Amen. Amen. That we need to be grateful for the life and the health we do have. I mean, if it's going to be on a rollator walker or a scooter, I'm all for it, thank God. I'm appreciative of the blessings of life and health, such a precious blessing. And thankful for our country, this nation. You know, I grew up at a really special time in the 40s and 50s. People loved America. They were just coming home from the war. That generation was just amazing. And it taught me to always be grateful for the United States of America, to respect our flag, to respect veterans who've given themselves for our freedom, to thank God, to honor the leaders of our nation and to know this is the United States of America. Well, we need to thank God, I think, for the wonderful democracy we do have. We need to thank God for our families and our friends. Oh my, what that word family means to me. How in the world would Curtis ever wade through life without Barbara? I just can't imagine. Thank God for our spouses, for those who love us, for our children, for our parents. Oh my gosh, thank God for the wonderful parents we have. Yeah, Betty, don't smile. Thank her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, Mama. I love it when the little girl said, Mama. Oh, my. Thank you, Mama. Oh, the blessings we have and family. The joys we have. And thank God for our church family. We have people here who care for us, who pray for us, who want to help us. Oh my, when I 
come in here on Sunday morning, I can't get Lance to back off from me. He's trying to help me up these steps and help me get around. Oh, what a precious guy. Lance, you better thank him, Karen. Uh, as I thank him. And, and thank God, most of all, for the dear Savior. Amen. For this cross. Uh, you're not going to catch me without a cross. If you do, you better say, eh, eh. Because of what Jesus did on that cross. Dying for our sins. And giving us life. Abundant life. In his name. So many blessings. Far more than we could ever number. Far more than we could ever count. Thank God. Let us pray. Oh Lord, you have given us so very much. Now please, give us this one thing more. A truly grateful heart. Amen. Oh, well, uh, sing a hymn for communion, huh? Oh, this is a good one. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ the Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Dear God, please create in us a pure heart. Let us turn from our idle ways and worship only you. Let us remember what you did for us at Calvary's cross. As we take this bread and drink from this cup, let us remember you, dear God, and let us pray your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. On that special night when Jesus invited the disciples to that upper room to celebrate the Passover, after the Paschal meal, he took the bread and holding it before the disciples, he offered it to them, saying, Take and eat every one of you in remembrance of me. And 
he also took the cup and holding it to heaven, he blessed it with a prayer and offered it as the cup of the new covenant. He gave it to all, saying, drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. So come, people of God, let us celebrate the gifts of God for us. Thank you. 
joy. And we'd love to have you in our fellowship to be a part of our church family. We invite you to come now and all of us have an opportunity to rededicate ourselves to Jesus Christ. I just lost my microphone. <laughs> Sure. 